Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be going over our top 20 players for the first half of 2020 for the PGR, as I like to call it, Proofs Grand Ranking, and I don't think it stands for anything else. And let's just get right into this, starting off with our honorable mentions. Starting off with the honorable mentions, and I'm going to actually have three of them being T, Onan, and Zach Ray. And the reason that these players are all honorable mentions is because they just didn't have enough results for me to comfortably put them in the top 20. It's so hard to gauge a player who has nine tournaments versus a player that only has three or four tournaments. So to make it easier for myself, I just left these players out of the top 20. But I still do want to give them their flowers because they had amazing seasons starting off with Onan. And yes, that is how it's pronounced. You can go to their Twitter. But they end up getting a 17th place at Genesis to start off the season. That's also going to be their worst placement of the season, losing to Tarek and Neo. Most notable win there is probably going to come from Entreset. Then, then they have a really nice run at Collision, arguably their best run of the season, getting huge wins on Tweak as well as really high impact wins on Meister. Cola, Tilde, and MPG. They're also going to get a second place at Diamond Dust, only losing to Nao and Shining Mark, but picking up huge wins on Shattuck and Riddles, as well as players like Peace Mode, Paul, and MK Big Boss. And then their final major of the season is going to come from a fourth place at Gamma, where once again, they're able to get a bunch of really high value wins, specifically on players like DeBuzz, Siski, Mars, and Big D only losing to Monty and Sonic. So very solid season from on and only one kind of bad placement and the other two are going to be top four at major events. But again, we just didn't see enough of them to properly gauge if they should be in that top 20. Next up is going to be Zach Ray. He starts his season with a 17th place at Umabora, only losing to Kameme and Yaura. And the best one he picks up there is probably going to be on right Shia. Then he ends up getting 13th place at Genesis as well. But he gets really good wins at Genesis, beating MVD, DeBuzz, and Mia. Most importantly, only losing to Sonics and Nail. Ends up getting 25th at Delta, which obviously isn't super great. Loses to MyPan in the winner's side and Goryoka in the loser's side, or other way around, rather. And he still picks up wins on Masa, Hito, and TG. And finally, it's going to be a fourth place at Kagadibi because, of course, he top aided the Kagadibi, picking up huge impact wins on Tama P and Doramigi, as well as some really nice wins on Ken, Aka, and Matsunabe. And the final player in my honorable mentions is going to be he ends up getting a ninth place at Umabora SP10, only losing to Doramigi and Shutone, so pretty good losses right there. Manages to top 8 Genesis while getting wins on Shutone, Gak, and Cola, so those are going to be worth a lot, especially that Shutone win. Does have a 17th place at Delta, where he still manages to get wins on Yaman Auction and Right Shia, and then finally has a 5th place at Kagadev 12, where he once again beats Shutone, as well as getting a win on Reru and Aka, Carmelo, and Kananabe. So all three of these players have had very solid seasons. You could absolutely put them in your top 20 but i just didn't to make my life easier so let's get into this top 20 and it should be noted that i'm not going to be talking about every single tournament that every player goes to just for the sake of time this video is already going to be long enough so we're mainly just going to be focusing on the major events as well as a couple of the b tiers but let's start off with our 20th best player in the world which is going to be none other than Gluten. He's going to start off his season in pretty much the best way that you can with a third place at Umabora, picking up huge impact wins on Mia and Dormigi, as well as a really nice win on Matsunabe, only losing to Akola and Mia. Like, aside from winning the event, you could not ask for a better start to the season, but it does go a little bit downhill after that with a ninth place at Cafeteria Cup, losing to Osimo and Otorie, as well as a 17th place at Kowloon Line, losing to Carmelo and Dormigi. And he didn't pick up any super notable wins at that event. The most notable ones are probably going to be Takara at Cafeteria Company ends up beating Senra at both events, but he manages to close out his Japan trip super strong by winning Ultor, which is going to be an A tier, getting wins on Fui, Masa, two wins on Rizdiasu, and then a really nice win on Snow. No sets dropped there either, so that's got to be feeling pretty good. His only event in America is going to be Genesis, and he ends up getting 13th place, losing to Zomba and Shattuck while still picking up a nice win on Kola, as well as wins on Send and MVD. So while the placement isn't super great, the losses are amazing, but on the con sharing his next event in NA is not going to go so well with his worst event of the season in Battle of BC where he ends up losing to Armadillo and Ludo without picking up any super notable wins so this one definitely hurt Gluto then he's going to get a second place at Gamers Game beating Krepsile, Raflo, Jogbu, and Andres FN 
only losing to Shutone, goes back to Japan, ends up getting 13th place at Delta with a nice win on Gak, only losing to Akola and Carmelo, so unfortunately gets double Steve there. Ninth place at KageDB12, getting another really nice win on Snow, as well as wins on Alice, Gorioka, and Kanonabe, only losing to Osimo and Ken, and to end off his second Japan trip, he's going to get a second place at Kowloon 11, double eliminated by Hurt, but still picks up wins on Gorioka and Ryuo. Back to France, I know Gluttony's had a crazy season traveling over the world. He gets a fourth place at King of Fields, only losing to Crepsolet and Siski while still getting a nice win on Bloom. And to end off his season, it's unfortunately not the strongest with a 25th at Smash Factory, losing to Capitan Sito in the winner's side and Andre Safen in the loser side without picking up any super impactful wins. So Gluttony's season is all over the place, both geographically and in terms of placements. He's got some incredible highs. And I think going into the second half of the year, I would honestly expect him to be ranked higher than he currently is. He has some controller issues going on halfway through the season as well. And now that all of those things are behind him, I think he's going to have a really strong end to the year. Moving on to our 19th best player in the world, which is going to be Meister. He's going to start off his season with a fifth place at LMBM, getting a nice win on Riddles as well as a good win on Tilde, only losing to Sonics and Leo. Then he's going to get ninth place at Genesis with a really nice win on Mutase and a win on Raflo, as well as Syrup, only losing to Light and Shattuck. He is going to get third place at Bonita Harbor with a loss to Waka, which isn't super great, but it is only a B plus here, and he still picks up wins on Sky J and Tilde before losing to MK Leo for third place then he's going to have a seventh place at collision where he gets another really nice win on riddles as well as a win on team not only losing to onen and light and his best run of the season is going to be his fourth place at the luminosity invitational because he's able to get wins on riddles mars tweak and light which are obviously very important ones especially those tweak and light ones only losing to shattuck sonics and the buzz his worst placement of the season is going to be this 25th at delta 8 he ends up losing to tomopi in the winner's side can't feel too bad about that one gets a win on gotch feet but ends up losing to leaf in the loser side and that's actually going to be his only kind of quote-unquote bad loss of the season aside from waka but at major events leaf is going to be his only bad loss of the season because as the next event kagadi b12 where he gets a 13th place he ends up losing to tomopi in the winner's side once again and doramigi in the loser side also beats gachapi at this event as well as Hiro and Chicken so Meister just kind of kept getting similar matches in his trip to Japan and to end off his season he has a really nice seventh place at Smash Factor he doesn't get any super high impact wins there but he only loses to Shiny Mark and Spargo so Meister's season is basically just a lot of him getting really solid placements only losing to like the best of the best his head to head versus the top 10 players in the world isn't super great but his head to head versus everyone else is remarkable you have to be an s tier caliber player in order to take out meister into this game and he's had a really good season our 18th best player in the world is going to be Snow, and he has a lot of results this season, so I'm just going to go through them rapid fire style. He's going to get a 17th place at Umabora, losing to Akola and Todoguri, getting a nice win on Riziyasu and Kananabe. He's going to get a 17th place at Kalu, losing to Reiru and Kananabe, getting wins on Carmelo and Taike. He's going to get a 4th place at Altcore with wins on Karage, Carmelo, and Fui, only losing to Glutini and Tamapi, as well as a win on Reiru Kusu. He's going to win Sumabato SP44, which is only going to be a B plus here, but still he manages to win it by double eliminating Karage, only dropping one set to Karage himself. He's going to get a third place at Sumabato SP45, which is an A tier, losing to Mia and Reru, but getting a really nice win on Dormigi, as well as wins on Masa and Alice. He's going to get a fourth place at Itsukashima number three, which is a B plus here, double eliminated by Yara, but he picks up a really nice win on Osimo, as well as a win on Nao. He's going to end up getting 13th place at Maisuma Ultimate 22, losing to Karinku, I believe that's how you say that, the Riddle player probably his worst loss of the season has a decent losers run beating most notably 33 pairing blocks mido and gadget before losing to hurt for as i said 13th place he's going to get a ninth place at sumabato sp46 which was an a plus tier doesn't pick up any massive wins there but his only losses are going to be the yara and raro so can't feel too bad about that one he's going to get a really nice win at kaiokan number five which was a b plus tier after losing to yn he has a pretty crazy losers run where he most notably double eliminates t from the bracket so that looks really good Good on his resume he's got a second place at Maysuma Grand Wars where he gets massive wins on both Hurt and Doramigi as well as some wins on Kome, MZK and Nize Mamo only losing to Doramigi and Mia he also picks up a win on Yaman Auction there as well then he's going to get a fifth place at 
Delta 8, which is probably going to be his best run of the season, getting wins on Leah, Rocky, Level 1, and Akka. Maybe not in terms of the players that he beat, but just in terms of the raw placement, only losing to Shutone and Tama P. He's going to get a 13th place at Kagadibi 12 with a nice win on MK Leo, only losing to Mia and Glutini. Fifth place at Sumabato SP47, only losing to Reru and Kuroponzu while getting a nice win on Yon P. A 25th at Sumabato SP48, losing to Navy and Rocky. No crazy wins there. Then he's going to get a 33rd at Mesuma Ultimate, or rather at Altcore the third, where he loses to Yon P and Masha. And finally, to end off his season, he's going to get a ninth place at Sumabato SP49, losing to Rocky and Yamadi. But the saving grace of that run is he gets a massive win on Mia. So as you can see, Snow, he does have a lot of lower placements, but he also has a fifth place at Delta 8. He's got a couple B tier wins under his belt. He's got a second place at an A tier. I forget which Sumabato it was. He's overall had a very strong season, and he just has a couple of inconsistencies that if he's able to get rid of going into the second half of the year, I think he has a very real chance of being top 10 in the world. And by the way, it was Mesumi Grand Wars the major that got second. I know I just recalled them all, but there was a lot of events. It's hard to remember them all. On to our 17th best player in the world, which is going to be Yao Run. He's got a really strong start to the season with his first three events being a fifth place at Delta 7. Doesn't pick up any really nice wins there, but he only loses to Shuton and Tama P, so that's pretty much just a nice placing on his resume. He's going to get a seventh place at Umabora, losing to Dorm Miggy in the winner's side, getting a super important win on Zachary, as well as wins on Alice and Umeki before losing to Shuton. He gets a fifth place at Kalu 9 with an amazing win on Zomba, as well as wins on Neo and Dio only losing to Mia and Osimo. He's going to get a 33rd at Genesis where he gets a win on Crepsile, loses to Shattuck in the winner's side, and then Gax in the loser side. Third place at Itsukashima, number three, only losing to Umeki, but gets two nice wins on Snow as well as a win on Taike. Gets second place at Sumobato SP46, which was an A-plus tier, with really nice wins on Reru and Snow as well as a win on Umeki, only losing to Mia. And to end off the season, he's got a 17th at Delta 8 with a nice win on Masa, only losing to Aka and Sparrow, and a 13th place at Kagadi B12, losing to Akola and Shuton, but he does manage to pick up wins on Doramigi, Kameme, and Carmelo. So, pretty much the tale of Yara's season is every event that he went to, aside from his first event of Delta 7, he gets a pretty solid win there, and he doesn't really have any bad losses. Like, aside from Umeki, Aka, and I believe it was Gak at Genesis, every other loss that he has is either a player that is in contention for top 10, or a player that is like 100% top 10. He's got amazing losses, really solid wins, including wins over players like Reiru, Doramigi, Snow. He's just had an amazing season overall. Definitely the best Samus in the world at this point. While I do think Siski could reclaim it, Yara just seems to have a grip on it right now. Even if Siski was in Japan, I do genuinely think that Yara is just the better player at this point. He's been having some amazing showings at his recent events, and I hope we get to see more of it. Our 16th best player in the world is going to be Shiny Mark. And I hear what you're saying. Shouldn't Shiny Mark be an honorable mention? If you're going to put on in Zachary T as HMs because they don't have enough results and Shiny Mark has like half of their tournaments, then why is he being considered for this top 20? And I hear you. That's a very fair criticism. But the reason that Shiny Mark is in this top 20 and the other players are not is because I am certain that Shiny Mark is a top 20 player in the world. I don't need a bigger sample size for this guy because of the three events that he's been to, He's won two of them, and let's start by talking with his first one, which is Diamond Dust, where he ends up getting wins on MK Leo, MK Big Bus, Shattuck, and on and with no sets dropped. It is only AB plus here, but he gets some really nice wins at that event. Then he's going to have by far his worst placement of the season, because it's not a first place. It's a 33rd at Comic Palooza Fight Club, where he ends up losing to Buonzin and Poogie. So he does take two pretty bad losses there, but it is only at a B tier event, and his only major of the season, he wins with wins over Sonic's most notably, Meister, Man, Gacked and Sonics once again does end up getting reset by Sonic in the grand finals, but still a positive record over him. I just could not put Shiny Mark in my top 20. I know that this is a player that is fundamentally unbelievable. I think he's currently top 10 in the world, but I don't want to go that far in this video, so I'll put him at a respectable 16th place, considering that he has a 100% win rate at majors, and do you know what? If you don't think he should be in the top 20, I think that's absolutely fine, as I've already established. I don't have players in the top 20 because they don't have enough results, but I'm still putting Shiny Mark in the top 20. I know it seems a little bit contrived, but this player is just so talented that I don't need results to see it, I could just look at the gameplay.
our 16th best player in the world is going to be Osimo, and this is another player with a laundry list of tournaments, so we're going to go rapid fire style once again. He's got a 13th place at Umabora with losses to Shutone and Zombo, but he gets a really nice win on Raru. 5th place at Cafeteria Cup, double eliminated by Nail, also losing to base mage, getting a really nice win on Glutini, as well as wins on Ouch, Cosmos, and Nader U. His best run of the season is going to come from his 3rd place at Kalu 9, where he ends up losing to Gak, but then he has a really nice losers run, beating TG, Taikei, Ken, Omatsu, and most notably getting wins over both Yao and hurt those were obviously massive for a season before losing to rare for third place 17th at genesis gets his revenge on base mage but ends up losing to spargo and gak gets seventh place at the Litvitational, as well as cirque de Skifel at the Litvitational. he loses to aaron mia and lima the aaron loss is obviously not super great there but also aaron is like insane it doesn't go to anything so i'll let that one slide and he picks up really nice wins on p that's the buzz and most notably zomba and in the main event of cirque he ends up getting wins on beast mopal and anathema does lose his run back to zomba as well as syrup then he's gonna go on to get a third place at Misuma Ultimate 22 with his most confusing run of the season where he ends up losing to Sora like almost immediately and then he has a crazy loses run beating Shiryuki, Alice, Kananabe, Reno, Aegis and most importantly Hurt before losing to Miru. He's going to get a second place at Kowloon 10 only losing to Akola while picking up a win on Umeki. Seventh place at Sumabato SP46 with a nice win on Karage only losing to Yoshidora and Suna. His worst placement of the season though is definitely going to be this 49th at Delta 8, losing to YN and Akio without picking up any impactful wins as well. That one definitely hurt him, but after that, it was pretty solid. Ninth place at Kagadi B12 with a super good win on Glutini as well as wins on Pisariman and Yonpi, only losing to Mia and Shutone. He's got a third place at Sumabato SP47 with wins on Yoshidora, TG, and MCK as well as Shupi, only losing to Reru and Kuro Ponzu. He's going to have a seventh place at Sumabato SP48 with wins on Kuro Ponzu and Gorioka, only losing to Karage and Kome. Fourth place at Altcore with wins on Aka, Taike and Yaman Auction only losing to Reru and Yoshidora and Finally, he's got a 13th place at Smash Factor, only losing to Gilhue and Spargo, while picking up wins on Siski and Capitan Siso. So, Osimo definitely has a couple bad placements throughout the season, but he's also got a couple really long loses ones where he collects a ton of good wins. Most notably, as I mentioned, Meisuma Ultimate 22, and most importantly, that run at Kalu 9. He's got a couple wins on Hurt, he's got a couple wins on Glutiny. His head-to-head -head versus the best players in this game is honestly super solid, and I think Osimo has what it takes to win a major event in 2024 he's been so close on so many different occasions and he just hasn't found himself in the grand finals this year but i think the second that we get this guy in the grand finals even if it is to the loser side he's just gonna have so much confidence behind him that he's gonna be able to take his first major trophy home our 14th best player in the world is going to be Mutes. He's going to start off the season with a 13th place at LMBM. Ends up getting upset by Anarchy, though he does manage to get his revenge as well as picking up a win on Syrup before losing to Light. He's going to get a 3rd place at King of Bombs, losing to Shattuck and Anathema, but he does pick up a win on Anathema. 25th at Genesis, getting double Game of Watch, losing to Meister and Mia while picking up a win on Taike. And now is where we get to the good part of Mutes' season, because from this point onward, he kind of goes crazy. He has a 2nd place at Cirque de CFL with wins on Omega, Shutone, Syrup, and Zomba before losing to Shattuck, where then he gets a win on the bus, as well as a win on Shattuck, though Shattuck does ultimately take the event from him. He's got a fifth place at Collision with wins on DD and MK Leo, only losing to Spargo and Cola. He's got a third place at Invasion with a win on Bloom Forever, only losing to Siski and Bloom in the runback. Fifth place at Game is Game, picking up a nice win on Crepes LA, only losing to Shutone and Gak. He's got a third place at Level of Expo, beating Capitan Sito, Lima, and most notably, he gets a massive win on Sonics, only losing to Light and Sonics in the runback. He's got a third at Low Tide, where he ends up losing to DeBuzz and Lima, but he gets a nice win on Pavement. He has a first place at Comic Palooza Fight Club with no set drop. His best win there is going to be over Pavement. He's got a fourth place at Dreamhack Dallas where he does get upset by Grayson but manages to get a win on Jazzo before losing to Lima and finally you're gonna have Mudes winning his first ever major right at the end of the season in Patchwork with no sets dropped getting wins over Jazzo, Peebnut, Wrath, Cola, and Zomba and unfortunately for him he does have a pretty weak end to the season, losing to Manny and Duplex for 49th at Smash Factor, so he goes from arguably his best placement of the season to arguably his worst placement of the season, but these A-tier events, I mean Mude's Cook, specifically at Patchwork and Cirque to CFL is where he got so many of his really important wins, as well as picking up that really important win on Sonics at Level Up X, but we finally got to see Mude's win his first major this year, and to be honest, I think he's got a whole lot more majors under his belt because his damage output and neutral game are just consistently being put further and further he's really pioneering peach right now it's crazy to see 
our 13th best player in the world is gonna be Zomba. He's got a ninth place at Umabora SP10 with losses to Todoguri and Dormigi, but he picks up wins on Cosmos and Osimo. He has a first place at Cafeteria Cup. No sets dropped with wins on Neo, Senra, Ouch, Naucha, and three wins on Atelier. And then he ends his first Japan trip with another ninth place at Kalu number nine. Wins on 33 Parent Block, Space Mage, and Gachapi, and losses to Yara and Hurt. So no real bad losses from that first Japan trip, but the only super big win that he picks up on is going to be Osimo. But luckily at his next event, which is Genesis, where he has like his best run to date, he definitely makes up for it with wins on Tilde, Gluttony, and most importantly, importantly tweak sonics spargo and sonics once again only losing the sonics in that first set of grand final so he gets four wins on players that are going to be in that top 10 at one event super valuable there for zombo then he's going to get a fifth place in limitation where he does drop a lot of sets to pibut aaron osimo and light but he still picks up wins on cosmos beast mopal and epic gabriel as well as getting his revenge on osimo in that main bracket of cirque where he ends up getting fifth place losing to mutes and pibut he's going to get ninth place at collision as well losing to lima and light but picking up wins on Super Semi and Omega. Then he's going to go back to Japan. He ends up losing to Tamapi and Reru at Delta for 13th place and a 25th place at Kab Kagalibi, rather, losing to Lax in the winner side and then Shutone in the loser side, picking up wins on Reru Kusu and Hiro. Then he's going to get a second place at Patrick with wins on Goblin, Apollo Kage, Peepnut, Shattuck, Wrath, and Kola, only losing to Wrath in the winner side and then Mutis in that grand finals. And his final tournament of the season is going to be that 17th place at Smash. Factor really picks up a win on Hazard but ends up losing to MK Leo and Big D. So, Zomba season, it's pretty apparent to see where his money maker results come from. He's got a really nice run at Patrick and an amazing run at Genesis, one of, if not the best runs of the entire season. But the rest of Zomba's events are incredible, but he doesn't take bad losses at really any of them. Aside from his losses to Aaron and Lax, pretty much every other player he's losing to is going to be in the top 20. I guess Peanut as well and Lima, but those are players that are definitely going to be in the top 50 this season so I'm not too worried about that one. I just have Zomba so high on my list because he won Genesis. Like, I feel like I really don't have to explain that one. That is just such an important win to have under your belt, and the rest of his results are also very solid. 12th best player in the world is going to be Doramigi, and his first two tournaments are an amazing way to start off the season with a 7th place at Umabora, losing to Glutiny and Kameme, but more importantly, picking up wins on Yaura, T, and Zombo. Those are all super high impact, and it's a similar situation at Kalu number 9, where he loses to Reru and Hurt for 5th place, but he picks up wins on Yonpi, Mutakin, Glutiny, and Ken. Just really good way to start off the season. Then he gets a 4th place at Sumabato SB44. Does come with an unfortunate upset to Vanilla, but he gets wins on Rarikusu, Kuruponzu, Riziasu, Shupi, and Ryuo before losing to Karage. Then he's got another fourth place at Sumabato SB45, only losing to Reru and Snow, so can't feel too bad about those losses, as well as picking up wins on Kome, Masa, and Alice. He's going to get a fifth place at Maisuma Ultimate 22, only losing to Mia and Hurt while picking up a nice win on Fui and Reno. He's got a fourth place at Battle of BC6, the only time he's ever traveled internationally. He manages to get into that top four with wins on Riddles and Base Mage only losing to Hurt and Yoshidora, so really only Japan could take him out. Does have a bit of an unfortunate 17th place at Sumabato SP46, where he doesn't get any amazing wins aside from Ferreira Rare Man, and sorry if I'm butchering that, I probably am, and he ends up losing to Umeki and Masa, but then he has a 4th place at Maisuma Grand Wars with really nice wins on Snow and Reru, so getting his revenge right there, as well as wins on Taike and Yonpi, only losing to Mia and Snow, so doesn't get his full revenge on Snow, and finally, at least for the big events in Japan, he's going to get a ninth place at Kagadi B12 with a really nice win on Meister as well as wins on TG level 1 and Neo and Taike only losing to Yaura and Zachary. Then he's going to have what is unfortunately his worst placement of the season with a 49th at Sumabato SP47 where he ends up losing to Primes fairly early on and then Mia for 49th. So honestly that's just a little bit unfortunate that you run into Mia for 49th. That placement definitely looks a lot worse than when you actually look at who he lost to. He's got a ninth place at Sumabato SP48 with a nice win on Kuruponzo, only losing to Alice and Gorioka. And finally, to end off this season, he gets his first ever major win at just 14 years old with wins over Kuruponzu, Rocky, Ron, and two wins over Rare. It goes game five in both of those, by the way, but he manages to clutch it out. I mean, Dora Migi is already so good at this game, and he's so young. Again, 14 years old, and this guy has already won his first major event. That is unbelievable. I think by the end of the year, he is a player that is going to be in the top 10. His edge guarding with Mimin is just like on point. No one else is able to do it like him. And to be honest, I don't really know how you're supposed to beat edge guarding like that. It's, it's too hard. 
and our 11th best player in the world just shy of that top 10 is going to be Reru. And he somehow is one of the most consistent players that we have with Luigi. Like, it doesn't make sense. His worst placement of the season is actually going to be his first placement of the season with a 33rd at Umabora. Wins on base mage, but ends up losing to Osimo and Akka. So, not bad losses, but just a bad placement. And it's followed up by his best placement of the season with a second place at Kalu 9, one of the P-tier events of the season. And he gets wins on Nader Yu, Yoshidora, Snow, Omatsu, Dormigi, and Osimo, only losing to Mia twice. And the event right after that is Sumabato SB45, where it's the same thing. He loses to Mia twice, but he gets wins on Snow, Dormigi, and Gorioka. Then he's got a seventh place at Maisuma Ultimate 22, where he does end up dropping his set to Aegis, but he gets a nice win on Gorioka before falling to Hurt. Then he's got a third place at Sumabato SB46, where he does lose to Relit. That isn't a great loss on his resume, but he kind of makes up for it by beating Navy, Gorioka, Karage, Rocky, Snow, Shiryuki, Yoshidora, and Umeki before losing to Yara. Then he's going to get a fifth place at Maisuma Grand Wars, only losing to Nise Mamo and Dormigi, but picking up wins on Base Mage and 33 Parent Box. 7th place at Delta 8, another top 8 at a P-tier event, only losing to Mia and Tama P, but picking up wins on Carmelo, Matsunabe, Takara, and most importantly, Zomba. He's got ninth place at Kagadibi, getting wins on Jazo, Kameme, TG, only losing to Tama P and T. And finally, or not finally, but most importantly, I'd argue he gets his first major win at Sumabato SP47. And I believe it's also Luigi's first major win because they retroactively took Lugis away. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but let's say it's Luigi's first major win. He gets wins on Shiryuki, Rocky, Snow, and Osimo, as well as Kuroponzo, only dropping one set to Kuroponzo in that initial grand finals. And to follow up, it isn't a super strong placement with a 17th at Sumabato SP48, losing to Alice in the winner's side, and then Daigoru in the loser side, but he follows that up with another really song second place at Alt Core with wins on Subaki, Carmelo, Osimo, and Yoshidoro only losing to Hurt. And his final placement of the season is also going to be a second place at Sumabato SP49 with wins on Kananabe, Karage, Shiryuki, and Ron. And he ends up getting double eliminated by Dormigi. So a lot of Rara's results are he gets second place at a major and he gets double eliminated by someone who's like top 15 in the world. And along the way, he just gets a bunch of crazy results. The consistency that this guy has with Luigi is honestly unbelievable i would have never expected a luigi player to get this high on the rankings this far in the game and i especially wouldn't expect their season to look this good Hold on, dear viewer, before we get into that juicy top 10, I want to ask y'all if you aren't already to subscribe to the channel. Clearly, you're enjoying it if you've made it this far, and it really helps me out. Back to the video. And we have arrived the top 10 players in 2024 for Smash Ultimate, what everyone has been waiting for. And my 10th best player in the world is going to be none other than Tama P. Daifuku. What a season this guy has had from going 94th on the Lumi rank in 2023, all the way to a top 10 player in the world, at very least a top 10 contender. It's just such an impressive season. And it starts off with probably his best run of the season with a second place at Delta 7. He gets a win on Goryoka, ends up losing to Osimo, and then just goes crazy, beating guys. Gachipi, Kept, Gact, Yamanoction, Yaura, Osimo, Shutone, and Mia before losing to Mia in the reset of the Grand Finals. But getting four top 20 wins in your first event of the season is definitely a good start. And unfortunately, after that, he does have a little bit of a slip up with a 49th at Umabora, losing to Raflo and Alice. But guess what? That's the last time that Tamapi missed top 8 at a major. It's the only time Tamapi did not top 8 a major this season. Immediately after that, he's got a third place at Altcore, the second with wins on Tsubaki. Two of them, Gorioka and Snow, most notably only losing to Riziyasu twice. He's also got a first place at Jinji number 3, which is a B-tier event where he double eliminates Akka, as well as double eliminating Yaman Auction, only losing one set to Akka. He's also going to get a fourth place at Delta 8 with wins on Meister, Gact, Zomba, Ken, Rare and Snow only losing to Mia and Akola, potentially the best two players in the world. And it's pretty similar at KagaDB12, where he picks up wins on Masa, Shutone, Meister, and Reru once again, only losing to Mia and Zachary. And if that somehow wasn't enough for you for Tamapi to be top 10, he ends off the season with a win at Subageki 17, his first ever major win, beating Gorioka, Fui, and double eliminating Shutone from the bracket. No sets dropped. And he also has a couple B tier results here and there, but he doesn't take any substantial losses at those tournaments and he doesn't get any crazy wins there so i'm just not going to mention them and tama p is easily the best bayonetta player in the world it's not even a discussion at this point the damage output and killing that this guy does is 
unrivaled. He is just such a monster. He's constantly trying to steal your stock, and a lot of the time, he is extremely successful. He doesn't have an amazing start to the second season with an 129th at Kagadibi and Kowloon 12, but I have a very good feeling that he's going to be able to make the bounce back because from what I've seen in the first year, he's kind of a beast. Our ninth best player in the world is going to be light, breaking the streak of Japanese players, though I will warn you, it's just for a little bit. He's going to end up getting seventh place at LMBM to kick off the season. He does lose to WebJP, which is a little bit unfortunate, but he gets wins on Mystery, Jazo, and most importantly, Mutes and Shadow, which are some huge ones to have on his resume. Ends up losing to Spargo. Then he's got a fifth place at Genesis with big wins on Meister and Riddles, loses to Spargo again, as well as Tweak. Then he has what is easily his best run of the season at Limitational 2, where he loses to Beast Paul and Mia, but he beats WebJP, Apollo Kage, Shutone, Zamba, Lima, Shattuck again, and he gets two wins on me. He gets four top 10 wins in one run. I mean, that is in incredible and unfortunately he wasn't able to keep it going into the next day at Cirque to CFL where he ends up getting 17th place losing to Apple was the ice climbing player pretty early on and Shutong goes to the loser side to get his revenge he's got a fifth place at collision with wins on Meister, Zomba and Mars and Chunky Kong pretty solid and ends up losing to Cola and Shattuck he's got a fifth place at the Luminosity Invitational with wins on MK Leo, Tweak and Hungrybox only losing to DeBuzz, Shattuck and Meister he's got a win at level of Expo beating Cosmos, Tweak, Budace and Sonics only dropping one set to Sonics, and he also, for his final major of the season, has a ninth place at Gommel, losing to Big D and Sonics, but picking up a win on Shattuck, and his final placement of the season is a 13th at Momocon, which is a little bit unfortunate, losing to Kobe and Chunky Kong, but he does get a win on Cosmo, so as you can see from Light's record, he has a lot of very strong wins. He's got wins on Tweak, he's got wins on Sonic, Shattuck, Shutone, Mia, so many amazing wins under his belt, and he does have a couple inconsistencies that are keeping him out of that top 5 spot, but Light is easily a top 5 contender contender this game he'll probably be a top five contender until the game dies or he stops playing he's just such an incredible player and i know he's been going through a lot of personal stuff this season as well so hopefully most of that is behind him so he can fully focus on the game because when this guy's focused he's one of the best our eighth best player in the world is going to be Shu Tone. He's going to start off his season with a third place at Delta 7, beating Matsunabe and Nao, as well as getting a really nice win on Yara before losing to Mia and Tama P. Then he's going to get a fifth place at Umabora with a win on Riziyasu and really nice wins on Osimo, T, and Yara, only losing to Akola and Mia. He's going to get first place at a B tier that I just cannot pronounce for the life of me. I'm sorry, but he double eliminates Matsunabe as well as beating TG. Just please believe me that it happened. He's got ninth place at Genesis with a win over Nao only losing to Sonic's NT. He does get two ninth places in a row. I mean, technically three ninth places in a row at NA events, though. Ninth place at Livitational with wins on DeBuzz and Epic Gabriel, but losses to Shattuck, Light, and Lima. And a ninth place at Cirque as well with losses to Mudes and Peebnut, but a win on Light. So he does have those streak of ninths right there. And those are like the bad placements that he has this season, which is crazy. He wins game as game flawlessly, double eliminating Gluttony as well as getting wins on Mudes and Siski. He has a third place at Delta 8 with wins on MK Leo. Hurt and Snow, only losing to Mia and Akola once again. He's got a 7th place at Kagadebi 12 with a loss to Tamapi, but then he has a crazy loser's run, beating Gact, Zomba, Navy, Yara, and Osima before losing to T once again. He's got a ninth place at Sumabato SP48 with losses to Shiryuki and Komei, but he picks up a win on Suna. And finally, he's got a 2nd place at Subageki 17, double eliminated by Tamapi, but he gets wins on Gachapi, Matsunabe, and Fui, as well as Huto. So, the the bad placements for Shuto in this season are like a streak of ninth places where he's like only getting good wins. He doesn't really have any bad losses. As always, Shuto is just an incredibly consistent player with a very consistent season. He's also got some incredibly high highs with third place at a P tier, a couple B tiers under his belt as well. And even though he wasn't able to get a major win in the first half of the season, I'd be pretty shocked if he didn't pick one up in the second half. Our seventh best player in the world is going to be Spargo. He starts off super strong. Third place at LMBM, only losing to Leo and Sonics, picking up a win on Leo and Light, as well as SkyJ. Another third place at Genesis, only losing to Zomba and Sonics, while picking up wins on Bloom Forever, Osimo, Ken, and Light. Then he's got a second place at King Kong, double eliminated by MK Leo, but he double eliminates Bloom, as well as beating Nao and Raffle. He manages to win Bonito Harbor, only dropping one set to Leo and double eliminating him from the bracket. And his best run of the season is definitely going to come from his big win at Collision where he beats Cosmos, Peebna, New Days, Shattuck, Onan, and Shattuck once again. No sets dropped. That's obviously massive for him. He also wins best of the West Misfire, double eliminating SkyJ after being sent to the loser's bracket by SkyJ himself, also getting wins on Alan Dis and Mystery. 
But this is where we start to see Spargo have a decline, and by that I mean he gets second at Battle BC. So not quite yet, with wins on Yoshidora, two wins on Yoshidora, Riddles, and Big D, double eliminated by Hurt. And now is when we start to see a bit of a decline. He gets a fifth place at Psych Showdown, losing to Mr. E and Alan Dis, and then there's a Japan trip. 13th place at Delta 8, losing to Rare Kusu and Level 1, though he does get a nice win on Yara, and a 33rd at Kagurebi, losing to Todoguri and Noi. This is going to be the run that ultimately ends up hurting his season, and he does have a good way to end it with a fifth place at Smash Factor, getting wins on Osimo, Leo, and Meister, only losing to Cosmos and Shattuck, but if you're any other player in the world, you're honestly pretty happy with this season, but Spargo isn't any player in the world. He's definitely not going to be satisfied with this one, and if you're a Spargo fan, I wouldn't be too worried about the season. I would honestly completely write this one off. I think going into the second half of 2024, he's going to continue being in contention for the best in the world. He looked really promising at Kowloon 12 with Kagaribi, so I have no doubts that he isn't going to be slowing down. And while the season wasn't the best, uh, he's still top 10 in the world. Like, you gotta put it into perspective. That's pretty crazy. On to our sixth best player in the world. And before I say who it is, I just really quickly want to say I think six through four are interchangeable, and I think three through one are also slightly interchangeable, but definitely six through four. I'm okay in any order you put these next guys because they're all so talented. But the person that I have in sixth place is going to be Hurt. And he's going to start off his season with a fourth place at Kowloon. Nine wins on Navy, Gorioka, Kananabe, Noi, Zomba, Gak, and Doramigi, only losing to Omatsu and Osimo. So the Omatsu loss isn't amazing, but he popped off at that tournament. So we'll let it slide. You're also going to have a fourth place at Mesuma Ultimate 22. Gets upset really early on by Miru, who had a crazy run at that event, but he still manages to get wins on Snow, Ryuo, Reru, and Doramigi before losing to Osimo. So he picks up three top 20 wins there despite being upset. Then he's going to have his first ever major win at Battle of BC6, which was an A-plus tier, getting wins on Syrup, Toroguri, Dorimigi, and two wins on Spargo. He's got a third place at Mesuma Grand Wars with a win on Nizebamo, only losing to Mia and Snow. He's got a ninth place at Delta 8 with wins on Gorioka and Yama Noction, as well as 33 parent bucks, only losing to Shutone and Level 1. And then you're going to have, by the numbers, what is probably his best run of the season with a second place at Kagadib 12 being right Shia, 33 parent box T, Zachary and he double eliminates a cola from the bracket getting double eliminated himself by Mia so obviously that's incredible then he goes on to win Kowloon 11 which is a B tier beating 33 parent box again Ryuo and double eliminating Glutiny from the bracket he wins Sumabato SB48 which was a major event coming in an A tier beating Masunabe Kome Karagi and double eliminating Shiryuki from the bracket he also wins Altcore the third eliminating Shiryuki Rarikusu and double eliminating Rare from the bracket once again no sets drop he also wins it's Tsukushima number four, which was only a B tier, but he still beats Jogabu and Gorioka. And all of that sounds amazing because, you know, all that is amazing. That's a top four player in the world. But unfortunately for her, his last placement of the season, Subageki 17, he ends up getting 49th and he loses to Teru and Meru Donha. I believe that's how you say that. Sorry if I'm butchering that. But it's literally just that Subageki 17th placement that is taking her out of my top five, out of my top four specifically. Because Everything else in his season is literally top four or higher, aside from that ninth place at Delta 8, which is also not a bad thing to have as your floor, but just right at the end, Hurt drops the ball. Definitely a little bit unfortunate, but also, like, you gotta put into perspective, as I was saying for Spargo, he's still a top 10 player in the entire world for Smash Ultimate. It's definitely not the end of the world. Moving on to that top five, and our first player in the top five is going to be Shattuck. He's going to pick up wins on Riddles and Beast Mode Paul at LMBM, only losing to Tweak and Light for ninth place. He's going to win King of Bombs 1, which is a B-tier event over Mutase and Anathema. He's got a seventh place at Genesis, beating Yaura, Jackal, Gluttony, and Meister, only losing to Tweak and Nail. He's got a third place at the Limitational, beating DeBuzz, Shutone, Epic Gabriel, Beast Mode Paul, and Cola, only losing to Mia and light and he manages to win his first major event at Cirque to CFL beating Mia to Buzz and double eliminating Budes from the bracket only dropping one set to Budes in that initial set of grants and at his next major event he gets second place that being Collision beating Icy Mist, Jackal, Lima, Light, 
Cola and Onan only being eliminated by Spargo. Then he's got a third place at Diamond Dust. Another win on Beast Mode. Paul beats Nao as well, only losing to Shiny Mark and Onan. Then he's going to win yet another major event. Even though he just won his first one, we're already starting the streak beating Mars, Meister, Riddles, Light, DeBuzz, and double eliminating Sonics from the Luminosity Invitational to take it home. And he only ends up dropping two sets to Sonics as well. One in the pools phase and then one in the winner side of the bracket. But he manages to beat him in the Grand finals which is so impressive i mean i don't gotta tell you beating songs in grand finals is impressive y'all already know that he's got a seventh place at low tide city which is a b plus here losing to teaser and guys so that is going to be a little bit of a weak placement for him and his weakest placement of the season is going to be 13th at gomble losing to syrup and light but he still gets a win on beast mode ball because of course he beats beast mode ball he gets a win at dreamhack dallas as well double eliminating wrath and getting a win on mbd he's got a fifth place at patchwork with wins on omega and monty only losing to cola and zomba and finally he's got a fourth place at Smash Factor, only losing to Gak and Sonics, but getting wins on Lima and most importantly, Spargo. Shattuck has had an amazing season. Shattuck was always a player that I knew was going to be top 10. I just didn't think he'd be top five already. Like he's so fast at improving. It's an incredible rate that he's been in growing. He's already so talented. And I really do believe that Shattuck has what it takes to become the best player in the world. There isn't a lot of talent that I still say that about in current ultimate because of how competitive it is, but Shattuck can do it. I know that he can do it. He's beaten the players that he's going to have to beat in those grand finals, sometimes even in the grand finals like he did versus Sonics at LSI. I think Shattuck has so much potential and I'm really excited to see how the rest of the year unfolds for him. Our fourth best player in the world, as well as the best player in America for the first half of 2024 is going to be Tweet. He starts off the season in the best way that you can with a win at LMBM beating Tilde and MKLeo and getting huge wins on Shattuck and double eliminating Sonics from the bracket. That's three top five wins on his first tournament and it doesn't slow down at Genesis where he ends up getting fourth place beating Shattuck again as well as Tarek riddles t and light only losing to zomba and sonics his only bad run of the entire year so far is a 17th place at collision where he ends up losing to on and and dd he ends up getting double seed for this event sometimes these things just happen but he doesn't let that slow him down first place at kawaii con does end up losing to larry lerd but he gets his run back as well as wins on tom p and two wins on gak seventh place at the luminosity invitational beating hungry box and leo only losing to the buzz light and meister fourth place at level of expo getting wins on Jazzo and Mystery, only losing to Light and Sonics. And just the way he started the season, he ends the season with a win at Gomble, beating Anathema, Chunky Kong, Cosmos, Syrup, Riddles, and Sonics. This is just such an incredible season from Tweak. He has two super major wins under his belt, a bunch of top eights. His only slip up is going to be that 17th place at Collision, like I mentioned. But the players that he lost to aren't bad by any means. It's just a difficult matchup for him, character and personal wise i think tweak also still has what it takes to become the best player in the world i mean the last time we saw this guy in an event he literally won it he might be about to be on the greatest winning streak we've ever seen in smash ultimate and it could start with supernova who knows and we have arrived at the big three, and that's a very clear big three. Mia, Akola, and Sonics are very clearly the top three players currently in Smash Ultimate, and I personally think the order of them is honestly completely interchangeable. It really does come down to what you value, and the way that I've done it starts us off with our third best player in the world being Mia. Now, we've got a lot to talk about because this guy does a lot of winning. He manages to win Delta 7, only dropping one set to Tamapi while picking up wins on Akka, Gokt, Osimo, Shutone, and Tamapi himself. He's got a second place at Umabora, losing to Glutiny in the winner side and Akola in the grand finals while picking up wins on Taike, Kameme, Shutone, Kameme again, and Glutiny. He wins Kalu number 9 flawlessly, beating Rocky, Gakt, Yaura, and double eliminating Rare from the bracket. Then we have his first bad placement of the season, a 17th at Genesis losing to Raflo and Zack right now. Neither of those are terrible losses, but when you're in contention for best in the world, you really can't take a loss to anyone that's like below top 20, so that Raflo loss is definitely going to stink, but he still picks up wins on Kananabe and Mudes, and he wins his next event, Sumabato SP45 over Raru, double eliminating him, as well as getting a win on Snow. He's going to get second place at the Limitational, being double eliminated by Light, but he picks up wins on Cosmos, Lima, Cola, Light, and Shattuck. He's got a seventh place 
place at Cirque losing to Shattuck and he does once again get upset by Peebnut but he picks up wins on MVD and Lima. He's got another win at Mesuma Ultimate 22 with wins on Kananabe, Dormigi, and double eliminating Miru. He's got another win at Sumabato SV46. No set drop beating Suna, Yoshidora, and double eliminating Yara. You're never going to believe it but he wins yet another event at Mesuma Grand Wars beating Snow, Hurt, Dormigi, Toriguri, Omatsu, and Rare Rikusu. He's also going to get second place at Delta 8, being double eliminated by Akola, but picking up wins on Shuton, Akola, Reru, Tamapi, and Base Mage. He's going to get a massive win at Kagadi B12, which is going to be the biggest event of the season, beating Goblin, Base Mage, Snow, Osimo, Tamapi, and double eliminating Hurt from the bracket. But then he's going to have another slip up, a ninth place at Sumabato SB47 with a really early loss to Shion. Now he still gets wins on Doramigi, Gorioka, TG, and Fui, but he ends up losing to young people before he can get into that top eight he wins king of fields which is a b plus here but he still wins it double eliminating crepsolet as well as getting wins on Tarek and bloom forever and his final placement of the season is also going to be his worst placement of the season with a 13th at sumabato sp49 losing to kashia i believe that's how you say that in the loser side or in the winner side rather and snow in the loser side only picking up wins on mzk and kuroponzu so with all of that in mind and the sheer amount of winning that Mia does, I think it is completely acceptable to have him as the best player in the world because undeniably he is the pro player who has the most competitive wins in the current state of Smash Ultimate. But the reason that I have him all the way at three is because unlike Akola and Sonics, his season has a lot of flaws in it, even if they're small flaws. Like, you normally losses to players like Raflo and Peebnut wouldn't be that big of a deal because those are going to be players that are in the top 50. But when you're in contention for best in the world, those losses are going to hurt. And losses to players like Xion, Yonpi, Kashia, again, no offense to those players, but in consideration for number one in the world. You just cannot afford to have even a single loss to one of those players, but he has so many of them. So if you want to have Mia as the best player in the world, again, I think that's completely fine. He just wins so much, but because of his inconsistencies, I've got him at third. And our second best player in the world is surprisingly going to be the guy that gets second place at every event he goes to, and that is Sonics. He's got second at LMBM to kick it off with wins on Chunky Kong, Meister, SkyJ, and Spargo, only losing to Tweak. He's got a second place at Genesis, which is his best run of the season, in my opinion. Only loses to Zomba, but he gets wins on Akka, Zachary, Shuton, Neo, Tweak, Spargo, and a win on Zomba in that first set of Grand Finals. He got a second place at LSI, double eliminated by Shattuck, but he also beats Shattuck twice, as well as the Buzz, Meister, Riddles and Mars. He's got a second at level of Expo, only losing to Mutes and Light, but getting wins on Wrath, Capitancito, Tweak, Mutes, and Light in that first set of Grand Finals. The only event that Sonic was able to win this season was the SSBU Open at CECC, so shouts to him for winning that one. He beats Jackal in the Grand Finals and also picks up a win on Lima. That's got to be feeling good, but back to the second places at Super Major Events with Gommel. He gets second place with wins on Tarek, Light, MK Leo, Syrup, Onan, and Riddles, only losing to Riddles and Tweak. And his final event of the season is going to end no differently than any of the other ones with a second place at Smash Factor 11, only losing to Shiny Mark and getting wins on MK Big Boss, Gilhu, Chag, Cosmos, Manny, Shattuck, Gak, and Man, just to reset that bracket versus Shiny Mark. I mean, Sonics, this season is unbelievable this is the only player in 2024 that has yet to miss a grand finals at an event and this streak is going since before 2024 he's been on this for a while at this point just the consistency on this player is unreal huge huge props to sonics he has not missed grand finals since i believe it was smash con so almost a full year at this point and to be honest he's probably gonna get grand finals at smash con too and our best player in the world for the first half of 2024 is going to be none other than a cola i mean are we even surprised at this point now i do think there is a very serious argument for a cola not being the best player in the world and that's just because he has not been to a ton of events he only has three majors under his belt and including b tier events he only has five big events but he has one four of them so you know what that's good enough for me starting off with umavora sp10 where he wins it flawlessly beating snow cosmos shutone ken glutzini and mia then he's gonna get a win at itsukashima number three which is a b plus here but again flawlessly beating omatsu neo and double eliminating umeki he wins kalun 10 flawlessly beating umeki and double eliminating osimo he gets his first loss of the year in may at delta 8 to mia but he still gets wins on shiryuki glutiny ken Aka, 
Tama P, Shutone, and double eliminates Mia from the bracket. And then finally, you're going to have Kagadb12, where he does end up getting double eliminated by Hurt for third place. I know the horror, but he still picks up wins on MK Big Boss, Yaura, Ken, T, and Zachary. I'm very confident that if Akola continued going to events, he would probably still have results that were similar to this. He just looks so dominant every single time that he showed up. Aside from Hurt, it feels like he really had a solution for everybody. Even recently, we saw him finally taking that set versus Spargo. I truly believe that currently Akola is the best player in the world. Now, there is a couple people that I think are really close to that title. I think Meister's really close. Not Meister. I think Mia's really close. Sonic's really close. I think Shattuck, Spargo, Hurt, Tweak, they're all on that borderline. But as it stands right now, I think Akola just slightly ekes it out over all of them. And with that, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. The support has been absolutely unreal as of late. If there's anything I left out, got wrong, or if you just want to say hi, leave a comment down below be sure to sub while you're down there and the final thing i'll ask is please just be civil in the comments i know y'all like arguing i like doing it too but be nice to each other and yeah that's all i gotta say i'll see you all in the next one Bye bye